So, as usual, COVID comes and goes. I needed a negative test to be able to go into hospital today. Now, for the long, agonizing 15-minute wait for the test to give its result, I combed my hair, wore my shoes, daydreamed for a little bit, put all my stuff together, and eventually started getting anxious and pacing throughout the house again and again and again. Hey, we are cleared. So we can go to the hospital today. We are in the library. I am early, but it's going to start filling up soon. So I'm going to show you guys what this place is like. It's the hospital library, which means we come here. All students who are assigned to Prince of Wales Hospital in particular get access to this place. So one thing that we have here are these computers here. Those are the only ones that have access to the hospital system records which help us look up patient records when we are studying from them. More textbooks you can borrow. This place is actually cool to be able to go up, but it's super creaky. Always get scared on them. So yeah, I have no idea who that is, but cool painting. All right, it's time to strap in and get to work. Now before I big dive into what we are doing for the next two days, make sure to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram where I ask you really important questions on what's going to come next on the inventory. So generally when I am on ward rounds shadowing a junior or senior doctor in a particular specialty, I'm often the kid that's noting down every single word that I did not know of or didn't understand. So right now what I'm doing is piecing together all the information by going and looking each term up, understanding what it means and trying to place it into the context of what I saw on the wards. Now to shift gears and take a break, I decided to plan out the next few YouTube videos and experiment with a new format that I think could look cool, which needed a little bit of doodling and checking out new songs in the audio library so I can make these videos better. Just before I can enter class, my doctor tells me that our class is going to be cancelled. And this happens a lot in the recent months because of COVID propping up everywhere and causing wards to go into isolation. So I decided to call a friend and see if she was there for an impromptu lunch. So you guys have seen this place before. Um, it's in my rehab, but I came here to meet a friend. And guess what? I have a full on celebration happening. Hello. This is Urvashi. Hello everyone. How long have you been in class with me? Um, four years now. Four years. Four years. So, we have shops and stuff in the hospital where you can get people gifts and things. So, I got a birthday balloon for my birthday that was last week. Cupcakes! That is so cute! <laughs> we're gonna eat and we're gonna feast and we'll let you guys catch up after we're done. Yeah? Yeah. walking I know my glasses are shit so we just finished walking and coming down to the car my amazing friend knows now how to drive <laughs> how did. cool how cool I love being in the passenger seat that's but why you're being driven around I know <laughs> special birthday girl privileges get down she's gonna drop me off at the bus stop and then I go take my bus and we get back home to our boring lives but anyway it's fine <laughs> thank you Rishi no <laughs>
So I have a patient list. I'm gonna pick one and go through their condition from start to finish. So yesterday I had spent some time learning about um, the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion and um, how it is managed. I knew that this is there in one of the patients, so I went through the theory. Now I'm going to see how it was actually managed in the patient and how um, real life comorbidities, in this case cancer, is going to affect its management. You know, one very interesting observation here is the doctor does mention that the patient is quite stoic. It's inter and, and then he says that he is under-reporting, he probably is under-reporting his pain. This kind of shows you that the doctors not only look at anything that's being said at face value, they are also looking at what the patient is like as a whole. And based on that context, what does that pain seem like? This sounds like a good doctor. patient that I chose to read was actually a very emotional one. <laughs> this is the thing about oncology or cancer care, the lows are like really low. And he was in so much pain. I think that's the worst part, the fact that he was in so much pain from all the conditions that he had and we weren't able to control it no matter how much we tried. I just read the notes. I can't imagine what it would have been like to actually have those conversations with his family and him. And it's just sad. Let's get back to work. We have so much to do. <laughs> and outcome measurement um, is, is pretty difficult. Um, like we've spoken about, systems aren't organized um, in the right way to measure quality of life. And that's why we, do, we don't do a great job um, um, wow, that lighting would have been making me look like a ghost. <laughs> okay, let's work out. Hey, I'm done. I know, I've got still lipstick on, I didn't feel like removing it. <laughs> I'm so happy I did it. Finally! Okay, now my work for today is officially done. I don't feel like I'm wasting any more time, so I'm just gonna go relax.